With the introduction of sculpt layers, sculpting in 3D Coat has really come of age and is now a very viable production level sculpting application, although that is just one of its major feature sets. In the next few videos, I want to try and highlight what makes 3D Coat unique and why you should strongly consider sculpting in 3D Coat. In this instance, I want to focus on a feature that is not available anywhere else. That is the ability to leverage PBR texture painting with high poly sculpting simultaneously. That will include sculpt layer functionality and if needed, we can apply dynamic tessellation at any point without breaking the sculpt layers. So let's get started. I should mention before I begin, for anyone who's new to the application, that you have three distinct mesh types in 3D Coat and they are native to their respective workspaces. That means if you import a model into the paint workspace, it is a paint object. Typically, it's low polygon in nature, and it also has a UV map. A sculpt object is a model that's imported into the sculpt workspace or created within the workspace using primitives or other creation tools. Sculpt meshes are quite different than what you are used to if you're coming from another application. There are two platforms to choose from. One is voxel mode and the other is surface mode, which is triangulated geometry. It's triangulated to help with conversions between surface mode and voxel mode, as well as having dynamic tessellation functionality built into many of the tools, namely live clay brushes. If you're coming from ZBrush, you'll find the Vox Tree panel is similar to using subtools. If coming from Mudbox, it's similar to the Object List panel. It's basically an object hierarchy or outliner panel. Layers is where you can store the depth information for sculpt layers, but if you are working in the paint workspace, it shares all of its paint tools with the sculpt workspace. Before, when I wanted to paint with smart materials using color, glossiness, metalness, and depth, I was limited to doing that only with low polygon UV mapped paint objects. The reason for that is the vertex painting, which is employed on sculpt objects, did not enable depth to be stored in the vertices. Now it does. So that is a game changer because again, we don't have to wait till a texture stage we can continue using all the advanced sculpting tools that are at our disposal here and at the same time skip over into the paint workspace and if we need we can go ahead and use our smart materials the depth information from them while texture painting with all the other channels now you might ask well how am i going to get that on my low polygon target mesh you would simply auto retopologize or manually retopologize like i have here you do your UVs, and once I have retopologized everything, go to the bake menu, choose which option suits your workflow best. Bake with normal map to per pixel painting is going to be the default. That's why it's highlighted. You could choose with displacement if you want to use that in your 3D application. When we bake, what 3D Coat is going to do is it's going to take a copy of your retopo meshes, and it's going to send that copy to the paint workspace and set up your layers. That's why it's very important to name your layers accordingly. In other words, if I'm working on a high poly sculpt object, I will name it with a prefix of SL. Your high poly sculpts and your low polygon paint objects are sharing the layer panel. So again, naming them is very important. Now with all that explained, we are going to work on this stone wall here or this retainer wall for a flower bed. What I'm going to do now is create a new paint layer and name it SL underscore lift underscore retainer wall. And I might add an underscore VP for paint. That kind of lets me know that it not only has sculpt layer information, but it also has vertex paint information. Okay. With that done, I'm going to isolate this by Go into the box tree layer panel and I'm going to alt click. So I've got a, a relatively high resolution mesh now. If I want, I can just subdivide it another time, but 
as you can see, it's already fairly dense at about 13 million polygons. One good option to prep the model for PBR texturing using localized subdivision is to click the subdivide tool and this will let you essentially create a mask of an area where you want to apply the subdivision or you could have 3D Coat apply it to everything outside the mask. You could also just apply it to the entire object. So using the subdivide brush, you don't necessarily have to select anything. You can just go ahead and apply it to the whole object. But you have to choose that here and then hit apply. And then if you have a mask selection on your model, you can clear it here or hit Control-D, just like in Photoshop. That's a keyboard command for clearing a selection marquee, and that's pretty universal in 3D Coat, no matter where you're at. So, yeah, live clay, the main thing, if you're going to apply dynamic tessellation with your brush, obviously you would probably want to turn wireframe on. So let me choose live clay. If you have depth enabled above zero, it's going to sculpt and subdivide. But if you just want it to subdivide and nothing else, then make sure your depth value is at zero. You can do it while still here over your model by right clicking and dragging down until you hit a flat profile level. And then you can see up here it's at zero. Now when you brush, you're just tessellating and that's it. Okay, so that's prepping the model for this. Now let's get to the good stuff. I'm going to start using my hotkeys to switch back and forth between the Sculpt Workspace and the Paint Workspace. You can assign them by hovering over those tabs and hit the N key, and that will allow you to assign them to whatever you prefer. Okay, so using my hotkey, I switch back to the Paint Workspace. Now I want to determine whether or not I want to have 3D Coat fill entire objects, or do I want to brush it onto my objects. If I want to fill, I would use the fill tool. If I want to brush, I can use the paintbrush or the airbrush, either one. You can actually fill with the paintbrush if you use one of these selection marquees and choose ignore back faces. That way it will paint all the way through. So let me go ahead and select this one smart material. I want to make sure that I'm on the right layer. When you preview, if your layer is hidden, you're not going to see anything. Also, if you have your channels disabled, you won't see those channels in your preview. So whatever's enabled, that's what you're going to see in your preview. And it may look rough, especially with really high resolution maps. So you would probably want to start scaling 